Hi guys, today I'll be doing a tour of my gaming setup, which is where I spend some of my time either gaming at my desk or racing on my sim cockpit. My room is tucked away in my loft, making it a nice quiet area away from the rest of my home. And since my last video, which was just over a year ago, I've made a few changes and some enhancements. I'll walk you through my new 2024 gaming setup room. I'll go through the different items I have in the setup and show you how I use them to make this space a pretty cool area to chill out in and game. And this is also an area I use as part of my YouTube reviews, making it really practical. Everything I'll be showing today is linked in the description, including purchasing links. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Let's start with my desk, which is from Secret Lab. This is the Magnus Pro sit stand desk, which measures 1500 millimeters by 700 millimeters and is made entirely of metal with a rock solid structure that's coated with a non-conductive paint and is capable of holding up to 120 kilograms and seriously this has to be the most well thought out desk I've ever come across with a really premium feel and finish. It has an integrated power supply at the bottom of the left leg which powers the sit stand motors and there's a power socket at the back of the desk where the cable management tray is allowing you to plug in a power strip so you can plug in all your devices and keep the cables hidden allowing you to have the power and ethernet cable nicely hidden away. At the top there's a cover providing easy access to the cables helping to give the desk a clean and cable free look. The sit stand motors are really smooth and quiet with the buttons being touch sensitive and being very responsive allowing the desk to adjust in small increments and it's capable of going from 65 centimeters to 125 centimeters and you have three presets together with a power button allowing you to turn it off which is actually quite useful so it avoids a situation where you accidentally press it and the nice thing here is that the control panel is integrated into the desk so it avoids situations where it could get knocked by a chair arm. The desk comes with a full size desk pad which is called a mag pad. It's got a leatherette finish and covers the full length and depth of the desk with it having a magnetic underlay with two magnetic strips for the sides which you can attach to stop any movement. I've got the signature black version where it's black all over with Secret Lab on one side and Magnus embroidered into the mat. This has a really good quality feel to it. You can use it perfectly as a mouse pad but if you're gaming, I'd say it's still worth getting a mouse mat as gliding on that would be a lot smoother. Onto my monitor, this is the LG Ultra Gear 39 GS95QE. It's an OLED gaming monitor, which is one of the new 2024 gaming monitors from LG. It has a 39 inch QWHD OLED panel with an 800R curvature giving a 21 by 9 aspect ratio providing a 3440 by 1440p resolution with a 240Hz refresh rate and a 0.03 millisecond response time making it ultra fast. It features a borderless design with HDMI 2.1 ports and a DisplayPort 1.4 supporting HDR10 and has a DCI-P3 98.5% color gamut with a color depth of 1.07 billion colors together with a contrast ratio of 1.5 million to 1. It has an anti-glare low reflection coating on the screen but still manages to give stunning vivid colors with great contrast levels. Viewing angles from left to right and up and down are excellent with no reduction in picture quality. And size wise I found this perfect on my desk without it feeling overwhelming in any way as they've redesigned the monitor stand to take up much less space giving a pretty good immersive game gaming experience. I've placed a monitor on the Secret Lab desk shelf which gives a bit more height on my monitor and also helps free up my desk space. On my desk I've got a number of accessories but I've kept things to a minimum. Peripherals wise I've kept to a single ecosystem with the Logitech G keeping things wireless for a cleaner setup. Keyboard wise I've got the Logitech G915 TKL mechanical keyboard. It has a low profile design featuring low profile mechanical switches. I love the low profile and media controls together with the scroll wheel 
for the volume control. My mouse is a Logitech G 502X Plus, which has a really nice ergonomic design that fits really well in my hand, feeling nice and comfortable, making it an awesome combo, perfect for gaming. For my mouse pad, I've got the Logitech G 840, and this is an extra large mouse mat that's 900 millimeters wide and 400 millimeters deep with a three millimeter thickness. It provides an excellent surface to use your mouse with, my headset is the Astro A50X, which features 40mm Pro G graphene drivers, which is a new material that's extremely lightweight, which helps to enhance audio and to reduce distortion. And even out of the box, with no changes to the EQ settings, the sound quality is awesome. It has a good amount of bass with good separation of sound. The mic quality is pretty good, with there being EQ settings for that too. It's multifunctional, allowing you to connect using Bluetooth or via light speed, and you're even able to connect both at the same time. So you could be listening to music from your phone and gaming at the same time. You've got a lot of customization options available via the Logitech G Hub app and the Logitech G Mobile app, which is easy and convenient to use. Plus it's compatible with PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, making it the perfect headset for my needs. I've also got my PlayStation 5 on the desk and gaming on this with my WQHD monitor will look stretched as consoles don't support a widescreen format but I am able to use it in a normal format with black bars at the side and this works perfectly fine giving a pretty good experience. On the PS5 I've got some custom plates which are from D brand. I've got the retro grey plates with mesh grill vent filters on both sides improving air circulation together with a matte black skin covering the glossy area in the middle. I've also added orange light strips, which are stickers that change the color of the lights on the console to orange, making it look awesome. For my DualSense controller, I've gone for the blue to add a bit of color on my setup, and I keep this on a stand from Extreme Rate. To add a bit of texture to my setup, I've also added some fake plants, which I got from Ikea. I also have an Elgato Stream Deck, which gives me some shortcuts to applications and games on my PC, plus it allows me to control my NanoLeaf lights. Then there's this power bank from Shargeek, which I use to charge devices, and I leave it on my desk because it looks pretty cool and it has a massive capacity. And to keep some of the visible cables tidy on my desk, I've got these magnetic anchors from Secret Lab, which locks into place magnetically and keeps the cables neat and tidy around my desk. Now onto my gaming PC that's mounted under my desk with the Secret Lab PC mount. This mount is able to support one PC up to 25 kilograms. And my PC is a custom built PC weighing just over 20 kilograms and has a massive Lian Li case and a pretty impressive spec with an AMD Ryzen 9 7950 X 3D 16 core processor, an AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX graphics card with 24 gigs, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 2 terabyte SSD. The cables for the PC have been tucked away quite nicely behind the PC and I'm using these magnetic cable covers from Secret Lab to keep all the cables nicely hidden. The PC is shared between my desk and SIM rig and all I've done is plug in a HDMI cable into my monitor used on my SIM rig and a DisplayPort cable into the monitor on my desk. And this is possible as there's multiple output ports making it easy to switch between the two setups. Performance wise the PC is insanely fast and gaming performance is ultra smooth. It doesn't struggle in any way giving a great gaming experience with a fast performance providing an awesome picture quality. My chair is the Herman Miller Logitech G Phantom gaming chair. It comes in three different colors and I've chosen the Obsidian black to match my all black gaming desk. You do need to assemble it, but it's pretty simple to do as it comes in three pieces that need to be put together and you don't need any additional tools to do this. It has a simple design with red coloring around the turning knobs and a simple Herman Miller logo on the back of the chair frame and a Herman Miller Logitech G label at the bottom. There's a lot of adjustability on the chair from adjusting the headrest up and down and tilting back and forwards. The armrest can be moved up and down and forwards and back and you're able to adjust the lumbar support at the back of the chair. There's a lever at the front to adjust the height of the chair and to increase or decrease the tilt of the chair, turn the knob to the left and use the right knob to tighten the tension. You also have the ability to adjust the seat depth by pressing the lever to slide the seat forward or back. The seat is made from a breathable material which is comfortable to sit on and provides support by distributing pressure appropriately and is perfect when I'm gaming at my desk or working on any reviews that I'm doing. 
Now onto my sim racing setup, I've moved things around and moved over to the next level racing GT Elite, which is made from a black anodized aluminium frame and has some nice attention to detail, like the branded levers to adjust the seat, which has the next level racing logo on it, and the cable management clips helping to keep things nice and tidy together with an Allen key holder. I like the low profile of the GT Elite and aesthetically it looks really nice, with it being really comfortable with minimal flex on the frame, and you're able to attach other accessories like a shifter and handbrake to it. The rig doesn't actually take up too much space with it covering 148 centimeters by 82.5 centimeters of floor space, which is actually pretty good as it doesn't feel too overwhelming in a room. The seat I'm using is the ERS1 made from a suede breathable fabric giving it quite a premium look and it feels comfortable to sit on. It has the next level racing logo at the top and ERS1 just underneath it. You're able to adjust the seat to your best position as it can be reclined to a maximum angle of 180 degrees and it can be adjusted forwards and backwards with a range of 170 millimeters. I've got the rig on the next level racing floor mat to protect my floor and around it I've added Govee's glass Glide wall lights to give some ambient lighting around the rig. The lights are pretty cool and with Govi's app you can get segmented control allowing you to create your own color schemes. I've got the optional monitor mount attached to the rig and I've got my LG Ultra Gear 45 GR95 QE OLED gaming monitor mounted on there. It's a 45 inch gaming monitor with a 240 hertz refresh rate and it has a 0.03 millisecond response time providing an ultra smooth gaming experience with no screen tearing or stuttering. It has an 800R curvature giving a really immersive experience when racing and with the wide screen you get an excellent coverage giving every detail in your peripheral vision without needing to turn your head making it ideal for sim racing and providing a great racing experience with excellent performance. With the monitor attached to the rig there there is a subtle amount of movement when racing but when you're racing you hardly notice it. To navigate around on my PC while I'm on my rig I've got a wireless keyboard which is a Logitech K400 Plus. This has a built-in trackpad and the small factor enables me to keep it just at the side of the sim cockpit. The wheel I've got mounted is a Logitech G Pro racing wheel which provides 11 Newton meters of torque and has true force which is available on a small number of games and I'm using it with the Logitech G Pro pedals. I do have a number of different wheels which I've reviewed but to be honest this is one of my favorites as I think the true force is a real game changer. I love the unique design of the wheelbase and the rim feels really nice plus the feedback you get from the wheel is just awesome especially when true force is turned on. As Logitech's wheels don't have any additional accessories, I'm using Fanatec's Clubsport shifter and Clubsport handbrake. Cable management wise, there's a lot of cables around this area and to keep things nice and tidy, I've used Velcro straps from Envisioned on the rig to hold the cables in place. And underneath, I've got a couple of cable management boxes, which I bought from Amazon with the one at the front containing a power strip that has the plugs for the wheel monitor and the lighting on the wall. Plus I've got another one for the power adapter, which I keep under the pedals, helping to keep things nice and tidy making it seem like it's cable free. Moving on to the walls and to give some contrast between my desk setup and the sim rig, I've installed an acoustic panel from B&Q as the wall is just painted white. These cost around 90 pounds each and come in a number of different colors, but I love the black finish as they fit in well with my color scheme. They're pretty easy to cut and to install and it didn't take much time. I've used screws on the boards to keep it in place. Plus the bits I've cut off, I've added to my ceiling to give a bit more texture in the setup. For the lighting on the wall, I've got the Nanoleaf black hexagon shapes on the left of the acoustic panel. And on the right, I've got the Nanoleaf lines, which are spread across two walls using a bendable connector so they can connect together. Plus in between, to give a bit more character, I've added some Nanoleaf triangles from the shapes bundle. I've decided to go with these as my desk has the Mag RGB smart lighting kit, which is powered by Nanoleaf and can be controlled via Nanoleaf's app, allowing me to control the lighting from a single app. The Nanoleaf app is great, providing a number of different options. And the advantage with this is that I can get all the lights syncing together, giving some pretty cool lighting effects in my setup. So there you have it. You've come to the end of my 2024 updated gaming room setup, which I think is pretty cool with a great vibe, perfect for gaming in and an area I can do some of my gaming related reviews in too. I hope this video has inspired anyone thinking of setting up their gaming room or changing things around in their current one. And let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have any suggestions, let me know too. 
For those of you who got to the end of this video, please leave a comment with 2024 Gaming as it's awesome to see who's got to the end of my video and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.